changes that NHS England were making to funding and contractual arrangements for, G for pharmacies. So we established the task of Finchu, but we undertook to do it in a slightly different way than we've done in the past, in that we held a, a one session and invited as many members of the committee who were able to get along to that. Um, I think um, it was it was a, an interesting way of doing it, and it was a good way of doing it, and that the information that we received was fresh in our minds when we came to start looking at conclusions, and it did complete the work in a, in a very timely way. It did make me brain hurt a bit by the end of it, but, um, but nevertheless, it was a good way of doing it, and I think we could probably use that method in, in the future. It was well attended, as I might say, but I'd like to thank particularly um, Councillor Gilchrist and Councillor Anderson, who also joined us, and though they're not members of this committee, um, they were very useful in, in their input. Um, but I'd also like to thank people from NHS England, from Rural CCG, from Public Health, although they're gone now, um, and representatives of Rural Pharmacists, and of course, Alan, which is always um, superb. Um, so what we aimed to get out of the session was to look at the detail of the changes, and then to attempt to assess what the local impact of them will be. Um, we are, of course, aware that pharmacists are on the first line and therefore an important service in NHS and are able to reduce the strain on GPs and A and E by offering an alternative advice for treatment of minor conditions, monitoring conditions, and offering preventative services. And that if there was a reduction in the number of pharmacies, that could well lead to an increase on GPs and A and E. Um, in our evidence gathering, we heard that the um, world is geographic as a geographical area is well served by pharmacies that has no assessment of how demand varies in different parts of the borough to match the different populations there are in the borough. And though there has been an assessment of the national impact of these changes, and I have to say at this point they've been imposed on pharmacists without their agreement by NHS England, um, there's been no local assessment, which was um, the main concern we had about the changes. In total we made seven recommendations, but the main ones being about the impact of closures uh, of pharmacies, um, that they be closely monitored both by the Health and Wellbeing Board and the people over the scrutiny committee, and we will review this in a year's time. Um, but other recommendations um, focused on further developing the role of pharmacists in the NHS by CCG, using opportunities to encourage pharmacists to work as practitioners within GP practices. Um, and also, we thought there was scope for them to use their expertise more fully. Um, in reviewing medications with uh, in working care homes to do that and perhaps that contractual arrangements um, through the department and care homes could include some element of that. Um, we were also very concerned about the possible impact on users um, of a pilot scheme which is being designed, which is running currently um, and being designed to reduce medicine waste by stopping pharmacists reordering prescriptions directly from GPs which we think is probably um, Quite a number of us actually do use that service, but it is a very um, helpful service for some people who are, have restricted mobility or difficulty access. And the people over the Institute Committee will be looking to receive a report on the impact of that um, when it's been, been concluded. So, um, in summary, though the um, review was an informative <coughs> process for us, um, it was frustrating too because at the conclusion we were no clearer as to what the impact. Um, of this will be on rural residents because nobody could tell us um, whether or not it would result in closures. Not NHS England, not the pharmacists, um, not um, CCG. And they all had a view, none of them really knew. So we will be watching this closely to see how that works out. Okay? I think most people were at the <coughs> review, so I wouldn't expect any questions from you. I'm really hoping you don't ask me any questions. <laughs> okay?
just add another one now, but obviously there's no time to play it yet. On the impeaching of the 70% we've looked at a number of issues, including current state of John Sidney Care, and we received a very um, full report from Jackie Evans on that. She's updated us today to say that there's been um, a lot of improvement in that situation. Um, and the other items look at are the uh, care and scrutiny for you, updated the recommendations, and you will have had. We are uh, concerned that um, of the 18 recommendations, there are only nine uh, actions reported to us. Um, Alan has circulated this document which looks at the other um, nine by you mentioned. Um, on members' visits to care homes, we've got, I'm pleased to say, um, a full, I think it's 26. So we 